Growing up in the sleepy town of Willow Creek, I always felt like a stranger in my own home. While the other kids at school flaunted the latest gadgets and wore designer clothes, I was content with my worn hand-me-downs and the simple life my family could afford. As I navigated the treacherous social landscape of middle school, I couldn't help but feel like an outsider, constantly on the periphery of the popular crowd. My parents, though loving and supportive, struggled to make ends meet. We lived in a modest house on the outskirts of town, far from the manicured lawns and towering mansions of the wealthy. I often watched enviously as my classmates boasted about their family vacations and extravagant birthday parties, knowing that such luxuries were far beyond our reach. Each morning, as I walked through the school's double doors, I braced myself for the taunts and exclusion that awaited me. The popular kids, with their perfect hair and designer jeans, would snicker and whisper behind my back, making me feel like I didn't belong. I tried my best to blend in, to avoid drawing attention to my differences, but it was a constant battle that chipped away at my self-confidence day by day. After the final bell rang, I would hurry home, eager to escape the harsh glares and cruel laughter that seemed to follow me wherever I went. Alone in my room, I would stare out the window, watching the sun dip below the horizon and wonder if things would ever change. On one particularly dreary evening, as I sat on the porch, the weight of my isolation felt heavier than ever. The sky was ablaze with hues of orange and pink, but I could find no joy in the sunset's vibrant display. Instead, I was consumed by a sense of hopelessness, a nagging feeling that I would never truly fit in, no matter how hard I tried. As I sat there, lost in my thoughts, I heard the sound of footsteps approaching. Glancing up, I was surprised to see my elderly neighbor, Mr. Johnson, ambling towards me. Mr. Johnson was a quiet, reclusive man, and I couldn't recall the last time we had exchanged more than a polite nod. Evening, son, he said, his voice soft and gentle. Mind if I join you? I hesitated for a moment, unsure of how to respond. Mr. Johnson had always kept to himself, and I couldn't imagine what he could possibly want with me. But something in his kind eyes and warm demeanor put me at ease, and I gestured for him to take a seat on the weathered porch swing. As he settled in beside me, Mr. Johnson turned his gaze towards the setting sun, his face illuminated by the fading light. It's a beautiful evening, isn't it? He mused, his words seeming to hang in the air. I nodded in agreement, but my mind was elsewhere, consumed by the familiar ache of loneliness and isolation. Mr. Johnson must have sensed my discomfort, for he turned to me and asked, So, how has your day been, son? 